Hello everybody, welcome to Legacy Studio. My name is Tim Lee and today it's time to take a look at some of the photos that I took while we were out doing our skiing thing. By the way, if you watched that video, thank you so very, 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 very much for checking out that video. It means a lot to me. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the photos that I was able to get while we were on this location, learning how to fall on my face constantly. Here's a picture that I took. This is at Showdown itself in the lodge. I thought it was a really great picture. Figured if I could just enhance some things, make them pop a little bit more, uh, we'd get something kind of awesome. And I came up with this awesome picture here uh, with my wife right here in the background. Uh, once again, the clouds look absolutely stupid, but once this image loads, which once again, I have no idea why it's not loading, that stuff comes off nice and smooth. Um, I love just getting the, in t the detail in the clouds that you obviously can't see for any reason at all right now. This nice view of the different trails that you could go down, uh, and the ski trails went in all different directions. There were multiple ones of them. Uh, so I like the picture. I really do. I even like the haze that's in the picture, but I figure once again, those clouds have every opportunity to be edited into something really, really fancy, and that's how I came up with this. I, I really do like this. I like the intensity of it. It does feel like an impending doom is happening, which actually really kind of did happen if you were there and you saw what happened there was a humongous blizzard that came in um, and we were literally skiing and snowboarding in the middle of a huge blizzard which was kind of awesome and uh, it uh, definitely my first day going snowboarding instead of it being a nice funny pretty lay day it was absolutely horrendous and too cool Another picture that I got here, I really liked this one. This one actually might be somewhat edited as well. I'm not entirely certain if I did edit this one. Uh, I'm gonna show you the actual edit here in a second. Shot at 100, uh, 500 ISO, uh, 42 millimeter f5.6. The situation being, uh, all of these shots were shot with a little kit lens, a 16 to 50 Sony lens, um, which is okay because it has an in-body stabilization. It does okay for vlogging, but uh, when it comes to pictures, it really, isn't worth much in my opinion it's chunky it's kind of and that's just my take on that I actually really prefer using my 16 millimeter prime lens uh, from Sigma and uh, some of my other vintage lenses that I didn't actually have with me I just had the kit lens because I figure I needed the the most options in a single package uh, it, since I was out on the mountain and god forbid I get water in it it's not a lens it would kill me to lose. So the edit of this image is this right here. As you can tell, lots and lots of intensity, pulling out lots of um, deep, um, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? It'll hit me in a second. Lots of, hang on, we're gonna try and remember this word. Lots of contrast. I had to look at the side screen to see that I meant to say contrast, but yes, there's lots of contrast in this image that really does make it pop, and uh, I feel like it really enhanced some things. I also wanted to show a lot of the patterning in the snow that you didn't see in the original image. Really wanted to show those paths that made it look like uh, like something a car could drive down that road, a sleigh or something of that nature, and just really enhanced things. Now, I do feel that I over-enhanced this. It's probably far too over um, processed but at the same time I still like it and uh, I'm curious to see what it'll come out with on the printer. So now this is super enhanced but I can actually show you one that I kind of calmed down a little bit. It's this picture right here. You can see it's still enhanced a little bit in those clouds really trying to make them pop but in the same breath uh, still not quite enough. It's pretty distorted. Um, I want to blame the lens for for that more than anything else. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of grain and stuff in this. Shooting it at 500 ISO really in this kind of lighting should not cause that much grain. Uh, but all in all, it's still an okay picture, but I do like the over-enhanced one better. I uh, feel like it reminds me of a bit more of a, a storybook kind of winter thing-ish. Sorta. So here's the next picture. I was looking for kind of a linear look down all of these different skis and snowboards. And as you look down towards the end of it and into the distance, it's nice to be able to see some of the, the, the structuring of everything out there, but I love that it's kind of blurred. And I figured out that this thing would look really awesome 
in black and white. So with a little bit of editing and a little bit of resizing and 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 just changing up the scenario a little bit, bang, it just pops with that that black and white tone. Now it's kind of grainy. I'm assuming it's going to print pretty grainy because this computer is the screen is pretty accurate to show what it may actually turn out to look like. Thankfully that says loading, which means hopefully it'll get a little better. So that's much better, but you can also see here, there's a lot of grain in this. There's a lot of weird texturing here that will probably just be in this final image whether I like it or not. Once again, um, I'm not used to my camera doing this. I've taken pictures of some beautiful scenes where I don't see this nature of grain. So I'm very curious to see how it prints out um, and why it looks like this. Because other images that I've printed out on my printer don't have this, this such a, such a grainy effect to them where these are pretty intense so once again i wonder if it wasn't the kit lens i'll blame everything but me okay so these are pictures that are kind of the ones i haven't done anything with i like them kind of but i never turned them into anything this is one where once again looking for that linear line that would just make things really really pop and uh, i like it but i don't like it i don't feel like it quite has that effect I'm looking for. But maybe we'll try and use this image to doctor it up a little bit and see if we can turn it into something kind of interesting. Um, but I just, I'm not really feeling this one as much when it comes to just the connect connection. And I tried several different versions of this, tried something a little bit more linear looking through a little bit more deeply. Uh, another one that's shot at 50 millimeters that really focuses on getting those people in focus. Tried them also at a different setting. Here's 1000 ISO. And you can tell that it's quite grainy, so 1000 ISO may have pushed it a little bit. But once again, I've seen better shots at at 200, 1 200th one of a second, which I try to shoot at a high uh, shutter speed because of my hands. Uh, F8, uh, so it's very deep, uh, a deep f-stop and uh, 16 millimeter at ISO 1000. Might have pushed it a little bit too much on that ISO given a little too much detail into the lens, but I'm once again, I'm not entirely certain if that was truly the case. Um, and then some other things, I got this fun little shot here of my wife that it looks pretty cool. I think with a little bit of work could turn into something, maybe a black and white that, uh, I, that I would obviously keep. Um, and that's about it for these pictures. So let me run back up here. Uh, to this picture here, uh, and I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to create a virtual copy so I don't lose it. And let's go ahead and see what I can do with this one. I think the first thing that needs to happen, unfortunately, is cropping out half the mountains. So let's go ahead and switch into my, um, that's not what I meant to do. I know it's not available. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and switch into my developer mode, which is control alt two. And we're gonna switch this now into a four by three ratio. I wanna do it tall, I think, in this shot. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust it to tall. And uh, wait, I, let, me, let, me, let me try wide again, let me try wide again. Cause I'm thinking what I'm looking for here, stop it. What I'm thinking I'm looking for instead here is just a small adjustment of what the center of focus is got a lot of extra dead space on the other side here so something a bit more like this is probably more of what I'm looking for something a bit more like that uh, you know what I could even crop it in a bit tighter so let's go ahead and try and crop it in just a tiny bit tighter we're gonna take it right to the ski and right to the tip of the snowboard here let's see if I can't get something out of that right about here I think let's see what this does feel like it's pretty good. Let's see what color black and white looks like. Actually, I really like that. Uh, once again, I'm going to bump up my contrast and see if it gets any pop kind of off the metals and stuff like that. And that looks pretty cool. Kind of want this metal to pop a little bit more strongly. Uh, sometimes clarity will help with that. Yeah, I just brought it up just a little bit. Dehaze, let's see what that does. That's just gonna darken everything pretty much, so I don't think dehaze is something I need to mess with this go around. Um, let's see what else we can do here. So shadows isn't giving me much of what I'm thinking of. Uh, okay, here we go. Whites, pulling down the whites here is helping a little. I'm gonna bring up the black slightly because I do wanna show off all the dark tones here, but not too much of an extent. Okay, I want to 
bring down my highlights as much as possible, I think. And I, if my, as much as possible, I don't want any uh, over uh, compensation. All right, let's go ahead and add just a tiny bit more sharpening, see if we can get a little bit more. That's nice. And then finally, bring up the luminance just a little bit, just to knock off some of that noise. Don't need to pull it up much, just a little bit. Okay, and we will try to print this a little later, I think, because I really do like this. Uh, one other thing I want to do is I want to affect the colors, and the yellows that I know are here, I want them to stand out a little bit of a different tone than the background. So I'm just going to alter this just slightly so that it just puts off a different tone than the than the snow itself. Okay. Okay, I think that's a pretty good look at image. And we can see how that prints. Alright, I don't think I'm gonna need this, but I'm recording, so I'm gonna need this. Okay, so I got the prints done, as you could obviously see. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what we can learn from these prints. Let's start with this first print here, which I think actually turned out pretty well. Uh, something that I notice is if you look at the screen um, on the computer, like right about here, You'll see that in this area here, it looks out of focus and there's a lot of grain here. When I look at the actual print itself, which I really don't have any way to really show you guys, uh, it does not stand out that boldly. It actually looks out of focus properly and not grainy. The grains are much smaller. I did print these at a DPI of 480 DPI. If you guys have any opinions or thoughts on how to properly print, would love to know your thoughts and opinions down in the description below, in the comments below. If you can put it in the description that I need to talk to you because you've obviously hacked my YouTube. Long story short, I'm actually pretty much a fan of this picture. I do think that it printed a bit more greenish hue than I had intended, but at the same time, I really don't mind it. I think it looks really good. And of course, in different lighting, it could look at something completely different. For our second print, I almost, almost fell in love with this print. It's almost beautiful. Uh, I absolutely love the depth in the trees. I love the how it works so well off of that gloss. It's wonderful. Um, I'm really impressed by it. Until I look at the sky and I look at the um, at the snow. It's really kind of hard to explain what I'm seeing in the sky and the snow uh, in this image. And I don't know what camera to look at now, so deal with it. I guess I'll look at this one for now. So if I, <laughs> this one being the Sony. Hey Tim, the Sony. So so, I mean, from far away, it looks pretty good as far as I can tell. But if you look at the ground here, it looks like it's got a bunch of square colored lines going through it and stuff like that. It's kind of weird looking. Um, at the same time, I almost like it, but it's just not quite it. And I'm not sure why. Now, if I look at the image on the computer, now switching over to the other camera and to the screen, if I zoom into this, you can kind of see a blotchiness going on throughout this here too. So I'm assuming that that's what I'm seeing here in the print. So I would have to try and remove that before I really was feeling really good about this image. I love the trees though. The trees, they're black, they're silhouette-y, they, they're bold with the, the snow in them. They're popping really, really beautifully. I love how they turned out and I don't know why I'm so into them. But the rest of the image needs a lot of help. The last image we're gonna talk about today is this really, I, I'm actually really in love with this one this one of the lodge itself. It turned out absolutely gorgeous. Sorry if my microphone's not picking me up properly. It is absolutely gorgeous. The only problem 
that I have with it, oops, sorry, unlike the last picture, is that that same blotchiness that I was mentioning in the previous image is in the skies in this image. So I have a feeling it's due to my own processing technique in Lightroom, probably over enhancing things a bit too boldly, um, and I'm probably messing things up. Taking a look at the print on the desktop, uh, thankfully it did not print it to look this cruddy. If you look up here in the corners and stuff, it's just all square and blotchy. I'm not exactly sure why it looks like this. We'll see if it gets better after it gets done loading. But this just, okay, there we go. But once again, you can see all this blotchiness in the shot here, all really weird and blotchy, and it's in there. So I'm assuming it's got something to do with my own processing technique. I've probably messed that up. What camera am I looking at? I don't know anymore. Long story short, I think I have to learn a little bit more about how to properly process things. Uh, the other thing I'm noticing about this picture is just right back here behind my wife, um, all of this is just far too much noise and no detail. Uh, I think you would want that in shot more in a bit more detail and if i look at this i shot at f5.6 with this i think i should have gone f11 or something like this to try to get more of this in focus usually you think bokeh or bokeh is, is an important thing to have here but in this case i really do think that it would have benefited to actually try to get this backdrop more in focus uh, by a lot um which usually I wouldn't do, especially these trees here, which are definitely out of focus. Um, looks like they're out of focus. Uh, Mandy, I think, is in focus. This showdown Montana seems in most of the way focus here. I'm just trying to figure out where my focus actually breaks. Um, I would say that Mandy's in focus. And, and once again, I'm looking at all the grain on Mandy's hand and things like that. And if I look at the print itself, I really don't see that grain to nearly the detail that I see it on the computer, which definitely makes me feel just a little bit better about the print. All in all, with a little bit of cleanup, I do think that this is my print that I'm gonna take pride in and that I'm gonna hang up as the print of the trip. I did not have much time to shoot extra pictures, unfortunately, uh, but the prints out of everything that I've printed, this one touches my heart the most. It reminds me of what we did, uh, It and, and personally to me, it shows my wife um, enjoying doing what she loves, which is also taking pictures with her cell phone. And truth be told, she takes better pictures on her cell phone than I take on my freaking camera but don't tell her I told you that. So anyway, I hope that you did enjoy this video. I'm very curious to see what you guys think. Uh, I definitely didn't quite complete what I wanted to do. I wanted to find an image that was worthy of selling, something that I could put up on my website and sell to you guys. The closest thing I think I found to that was our tree picture, but that needs a bit more refining. So any thoughts or opinions, leave them in the comments below. Keep them clean. It's my channel. I will delete you if you give me an attitude. So there. I'm trying to be the bad boy guy because that would apparently get me more attention on YouTube. I don't know if that's true, but still I'm doing it anyway. And it is my channel and it would hurt my feelings. <laughs> Just be nice. Keep the comments nice, guys. Unfortunately, the world of photography and the people within photography can be pretty mean at times. Uh, critiques can turn into a bit more of a plastering of self-defense and self-reliance on being the best photographer in the world depending on who you talk to, especially on Facebook forums, because I've experienced that myself. Just saying, uh, enjoy leaving some comments. Let me know which one of them was your favorite picture and what you might do to fix some of my flubs. But that is gonna do it here on the video today. Hope that you have enjoyed it. We're looking forward to the next trip. Remember, eight to 10 trips that we're gonna try and take this year, focusing around the idea of getting some awesome photography and some awesome vlogs while we do reviews of equipment during those vlogs and around those vlogs. Uh, and would love for you to be a part. If you did enjoy the video, it would mean the world to me if you would subscribe, hit the like button, leave a comment, and hit the bell button so you can get notified when we have new videos coming up because they come out every, right now, every Monday and Thursday if I do my job correctly. That would be the hope. But I cannot guarantee that it's always going to be that way, but I'm trying my very best Monday and Thursday. All right, God bless you guys. We will see you next time right here on Legacy Studio. Thank you so much for supporting me. Supporting me! If you love what I do and you want to show me some extra support, I would love it if you'd help me out on my Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Tim Lee Michael. Head on over there and show me some support. That means a lot to me and there's some cool rewards over there. Thank you so much for hanging out, guys. We'll see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.